nine productivity hacks that actually work and that I use personally. This is gonna be a bit of a different style of video. It's not gonna be solely focused on investing in personal finance. We're gonna be going through some productivity hacks you can implement. Some of them do relate to investing, but other things are just more general lifestyle or life advice that you can actually use and implement to make your life easier and obviously more productive as well. This is my first time trying out a video that isn't investing or personal finance related. So if you do enjoy this type of video, drop a like and also a comment. Leave your favorite productivity hacks in the comments below as well. I'm also using a brand new setup, got new lighting, got a new mic and camera stand, new camera. So if the quality of the video is also good on your end, whether it's a phone or a laptop you're watching on, please let me know in the comments as well. But without further ado, let's get into productivity hacks, nine in total. The first one, this relates to finance, of course. We'll start off with finance one. Number one is automation. The more things you can automate in your life, the better. Whether that's investing, saving, paying bills, paying off your credit cards, automation frees up more time. I mean, you don't actually spend more time being productive through working, building a side hustle, having fun, spending time with family and friends, whatever it is. Automation, when it comes to your finances, is the biggest game changer and will free up so much time that you would have been spent fiddling around with your money. That's all automated. It's a time saver so you can do other stuff with your life. Number two, two times speed both podcasts and YouTube videos. And if failing that, because you might maybe someone speaks quite quickly, I know I do, failing two times speed, use one and a half times speed. This also applies to audiobooks as well. And as I already said, podcasts and YouTube videos. This means you can get through so much more content so much quicker. For example, I got a new camera, new equipment. I'm trying to learn how to use it all and how to get the best settings. I use 1.5 speed, if not two times speed on videos on YouTube just to get through it quicker and get it set up. Number three, and this is more of a long-term productivity hack but it relates back to the compound effect. There's a book here, Atomic Habits by James Clear, brilliant book all about habits, building good habits, and essentially how habits compound over time and make you a more productive person. Whether that's reading literally a page a day, doing one press up a day, even though it seems easy and pointless, it's not the actual one page a day or the one press up a day that is hard, it's just the routine and the habit of getting into it, and over time you do five, then 10, then all of a sudden, over the course of a year, five years, 10 years, you have become immensely more productive because of those daily compound habits that you've implemented today. Number four, do things in bulk. This can apply to cooking, to doing your washing or laundry, to even recording. If I'm recording TikToks, for example, for my TikTok account, Making Money Simple, where you should go and follow me, I will try and record maybe five or 10 TikToks at the same time. You know, if you get that sort of creative juice flowing where you make one, you might as well make a few more. Otherwise, it can take a while to get back in the swing of it if you're trying to do one every few days. Same thing applies to YouTube videos, podcasts. Where possible, I try and bulk record them just because it's easier to do one after the other and it means you then have a backlog of content rather than trying to sort of panic and do it all at once in, on, the, on the day when it's meant to be released. But as I mentioned, it applies to other things such as doing your washing, doing your cleaning, Doing things in bulk is much easier. Ultimately, that's what productivity hacks should be used for. Things that are making you more productive so you can free up time to maybe spend building a side hustle or spend having time off rather than doing daily monotonous little things that you don't really want to be doing. Number five, this is an absolute classic. Your parents have probably said it, but if something takes less than two minutes, just do it now. Just do it! You can apply that to if it takes less than 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, but I'd say take less than two minutes, just do it now. If that's washing up a plate in the kitchen or making your bed in the morning, if it's something quick, something easy, just smash it out and get it done. <laughs> yeah, boy. And as well, I feel people, myself a bit included, are obsessed with doing to-do lists and keeping track of everything, but if it takes less than two minutes, there's no point even writing it down. By the time you get off your phone, get up your bit of paper, pen, write down whatever it is, you could have done the job already. So if it takes less than two minutes, just get it done. Number six, and this has been a game changer for me, is on your phone to use do not disturb. So I have a personal setting on at the moment where essentially between about 9 a.m. and about 8 p.m. when I'm meant to be working my full-time job or maybe making content for Making Money Simple, I have my notifications silenced unless it's from a few specific people. Before this, my phone was just on the side, always flicking up, new tweet, new Facebook thing, whatever it is. Now, I only really have checked my phone, it only makes a noise if it's someone that I've specifically designed to make a noise for, and if not, it doesn't flash. So I only check it when I actually want to check it. I'm not just being sucked into it the whole time. And this means when I'm working, my full-time job, when I'm making videos, I'm not getting distracted and looking at my phone constantly. So using that do not disturb feature or that personal feature on your phone will make you check your phone a lot less. Another sort of side productivity hack here is to turn off notifications. 
ages ago, I turned off notifications for things like Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, just so you get so much stuff coming through. And once again, that frees up more of your time. Another bit of this as well, you can use Grayscale on your phone, which I'll put a YouTube video in the description on how you can do that. But essentially, I haven't got on at the moment, but what it means is all your apps are grayed out. Normally you're gonna get drawn to Instagram being pink or Facebook being blue with a little one, but if everything's grayed out, it makes it a lot less attractive and you're less likely to get sucked in and waste your time on your phone aimlessly scrolling. Number seven, we're getting towards the end now, and this one is use Notion. Notion is essentially what I use to try and track my entire life, but I especially use it for making money simple, tracking YouTube videos, podcast episodes, content I want to make, products I want to release. I also try and use it personally to track things such as fitness, health, um, a to-do list, all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of good content and a lot of people on YouTube already make Notion templates and dashboards and videos, but if you want me to share mine with you, let me know and I can make a video on that. Number eight, the penultimate one is take breaks. There are a lot of different systems out there. You often hear about these when you're trying to study. You don't want to be going hard for hours and hours. You need to reward yourself with breaks because often after a bake, you come back more productive. Not just studying, but even if you're working at home, working from home for eight hours a day, even going for a 10 minute walk or a five minute sit out in the garden can make you come back, think of something and make you much more productive than you just sitting in the same place all day. I definitely fall into the trap of occasionally not taking enough breaks, especially if I just wanna get stuff done. But I find personally, and from my experience, if you take a little break, you come back more productive. Number nine, and the final one is a clean desk. Now, I don't really know why this works, but I find if you have a clean space in front of you with not a lot of clutter and crap, essentially, then you just feel more productive and you feel happier in your environment. I'll show you my desk setup now. I've always got all my YouTube gear on the side as it's set up. As you can see, I normally have my one laptop, my second monitor, a phone stand, and a mug of tea usually. That is my desk. I keep it very clear, very clear from clutter. And it's similar to the tip of your phone. Just by not having stuff everywhere and stuff popping up and flashing up, it makes it much easier to be productive. So that wraps up these videos. These are nine productivity hacks that I personally use and that I think actually work. Leave any other productivity hacks that you have in the comments below. I'll be interested to try out a few more. And as I mentioned, this is a whole new setup for me, not just in terms of the equipment I'm using, but also the style of video. So if you did think the quality was good and you actually enjoyed the content of this video, not necessarily on investing in personal finance, but more just on productivity and lifestyle, then once again, please let me know in the comments below. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.